This is video number two for the quiz on 5.1 to 5.2, and this is reviewing derivatives. So we're going to go through some basic derivatives. We're going to talk about properties, we're talking about logarithmic differentiation, and then finally an application of derivatives. So you get a good variety of problems here. First couple problems, directions are just derived. You'll have a section on your quiz. That's exactly what it'll say, is just find the derivative. So I'm starting with one where you have to use properties. So I'm going to break this up as the natural log of 3x plus 1 half the natural log of x plus 5. If you want, you could go even further. You could break up the natural log of 3x into the natural log of 3 plus the natural log of x. Um, it, I, a lot of times I don't do that just because this is so easy to derive as is. I don't really feel like I need to pull it apart anymore. But if you want to, you definitely can. When I go to derive, keep in mind the derivative is the derivative of u over u, or du over u. So it's the derivative of 3x over 3x. Now, I think a lot of people realize that those 3's are going to cancel, so if you want to go straight to 1 over x, that's fine. Plus, we have 1 half times the derivative of x plus 5, which is 1 over x plus 5. You can leave it like that, you can write it like this, and that problem is finished. One of the most basic derivatives, I mean, you will have a couple that are even easier than that on the quiz that don't require any property usage, but I wanted to go to those because those are the most common. When you have at least one, if not more, properties that allow you to expand it, and then you derive each term separately. The next one is an example of what we call an embedded natural law. We went over this on day two of 5.1, where you're taking a not you're taking a derivative of a natural log, and you actually get a natural log in your derivative. So when you do this, for your derivative, it's the derivative of all of this over all of this. So you have to kind of use the natural log derivative while you do it. So it's the derivative, the way you take the derivative of the natural log of x squared plus 3 is it's the derivative of x squared plus 3 over x squared plus 3. And then that whole thing, that is, you have to think of this whole thing as u. This entire piece is the du. And then you have to put the whole thing over the natural log of x squared plus 3. And we talk in class that you really don't want to leave your answer like this, because that's an example of a complex fraction. But it's really easy to clean it up. All you have to do is take both denominators and put them together. So your final answer will be 2x over x squared plus 3 natural log of x squared plus 3. And they all tend to have that exact same look to them. They always have a natural log in your answer. Because when you're thinking of your u piece, your u has a natural log in it. So you're kind of doing like a du over u over the bigger u piece is the best way to think of it. The next one is an example of logarithmic differentiation. Now the nice thing on your test is I will say in the directions, use logarithmic differentiation. So it's not a situation where you forget that that's the technique you have to use. The other thing that'll stand out is when you look at it, it's a really messy function that you're asking to derive, and you want there to be a natural log there. You want to introduce a natural log, and that's what logarithmic differentiation does. It puts a natural log in where you wish there was one to make it easier to derive. So what I do is I take the natural log of both sides. So I have the natural log of y equals, and now I'm going to really expand it as much as I can. I'll have 3 natural log of x plus 5 minus the natural log of x, minus 1 half the natural log of x squared plus 4. So I did a big expansion using actually just about every property on there. Now I go to derive. Now when I derive the left side, you don't want to ignore that piece. You have to take the derivative of the natural log of y. This is where it's a little bit of an implicit differentiation, because you're deriving something in terms of y. So you use your natural log rule, which is the derivative of this over this, so you get 1 over y. But then because it's a y piece, we have to write dy dx. Then we'll go to the next term. This is in x, so we don't have to worry about dy dx. The derivative of x plus 5 is 1, but we also have this 3 up front, so it's 3 over x plus 5 minus, the derivative of this is just 1 over x, minus the derivative of x squared plus 4 is 2x over, we still have this 1 half, so I'm going to put a 2, and then parentheses x squared plus 4. The only thing simplifying I would do is I would expect you to cancel these 2's. Um, that's something that you would see on the test as well, especially if this is a multiple choice question. 
the last thing you have to realize is your answer needs to be what dy dx is. The goal is to get this by itself. The way I do that is I'm going to multiply both sides by y. And y is this original function that you were presented with. And when you originally read the question, it was y equals. So when you multiply both sides by y, we're multiplying by that huge initial function. So my final answer is dy dx equals, I'm going to put all of this in parentheses or brackets, 3 over x plus 5 minus 1 over x minus x over x squared plus 4 times my original function, which was x plus, x plus 5 cubed over x square root of x squared plus 4. You'll have very large answers for this, but the good thing is not only on the quiz you're going to take with me, but even on the AP test in general, they don't do a lot of simplifying. It's kind of messy, but we, it's left in that messy form, and that is how you do a logarithmic differentiation. I've got one thing left that I want to do, and it kind of falls under the category of an application of derivatives. This is going back two chapters, maybe even actually three chapters, a little bit more of what we did in Chapter 2, not as much in Chapter 3, where we have to write an equation of a tangent line. This is a skill that we need to never forget. It's a skill that we learn at the very beginning of derivatives, and it carries on through the entire course of the class. So the, the directions are asking you to write an equation for the tangent line to the function at the point x equals 3. So first thing I know I need is I need a derivative, because the derivative will give me slope of my line. So when I derive this, it's a du over u. Notice it's no properties, nothing fancy here. So the derivative is 2x over x squared minus 8. I'm going to use that to figure out my slope. My slope is going to be what I get when I take this 3 and plug it in for x. So when I put 3 in, I get 6 over 9 minus 8 which is 6 over 1, which is 6. So I get my slope. The only thing I'm missing is the y value, because if you think about what it takes to write an equation of a line, you need an x, a y, and a slope. I've got two out of the three. The way I'm going to figure out y is I'm going to take my x and plug it into my original function. That will always give me my y. So my y equals the natural log of 3 squared, which is 9, minus 8. So my y is the natural log of 1. I don't need a calculator for this. You should know that the natural log of 1 is 0. So my point is the point 3, 0, and my slope is 6. Now at this point, I'm just going to write my equation. You could use y equals mx plus b. You could use point slope. So if I do y equals mx plus b, it's actually a very easy one since I'm working with a pretty simple point. I get 0 equals 6 times 3 plus b. Subtract 18 from both sides. I get b to be negative 18. So my final answer is y equals 6x minus 18. If you want to do a visual check of what you did, you could graph your original function, the natural log of x squared minus 8. You could graph this line, 6x minus 18, and you should see them touch at the point 3, 0, which will kind of give you a nice visual check of what you just did algebraically. And that is a review of everything you need to know about derivatives for the natural log.